Each so. week at It's Happening <laughs> Out, we ask our host about what is important to them. But there's a twist. Uh, it must be in just 30 seconds. Are you here? that bell. This segment is called What's on Your Mind, and it's sponsored by Jets Pizza. Jets is the LGBTQ plus pizza of choice for South Florida. What's on our mind is the deep dish Detroit style pizza, or perhaps the cauliflower thin crust. Jets Pizza has been with It's Happening Out for four years, and they captured our attention with their fourth season promotion of their campaign called Bigger is Better. And of course, they're talking about the size of their slices. What did you think I was talking about? Well, Jets supports a huge variety of LGBTQ plus events and nonprofits with more than 400 locations nationwide and 35 in Florida. They are considered one of the best franchise opportunities in America. And the South Florida LGBTQ plus community loves their pizza. And that is why Jets Pizza is our sponsor of what's on my mind. All right, Cameron, let's start with you. What's on your mind? What's on my mind? It's simple. It's easy. It's love. We had Mark Moffat get married. We had Jonathan Castanez get engaged. <laughs> I'm single and ready to mingle and needing a sugar daddy at any moment. Al Ferguson, please put the word out for me. I'm desperate. Somebody. All right. <laughs> there is like something that. in the water. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And uh, Trini, uh, what's on your mind this week? Uh, the Broadway World Awards. The national uh, publication, and uh, they have a competition in each city. And uh, Miami metro area, which is from Key West to uh, Palm Beach County, um, announced their their awards and the best uh, musical, uh, best ensemble um, goes to Mamma Mia from the Seminole Theater in Homestead, Florida. Awesome! So, Homestead, that's where it's at. Mic drop. Okay. <laughs> five out of five people saw it. That is... No, no, no. No, no. That's no. by the ratings. Was, yeah, that's uh, oh, that really is nice. awesome. Five Congratulations. Cool. Thank you. That is uh, wonderful. <laughs> and elimination? <laughs> your mind. On my mind this week, um, it's Black History Month. I'm so excited for the next 28 days that we finally can talk about it whether we want to talk about it or not. And so let's talk about football and, and, and how football tried to eliminate the black voice for Colin. And now this coming up, Cheryl Lee Ralph will be singing the black national anthem on a main stage hey, at a football game. Hey, at, at, at that. That's awesome. And not only that, first time in history, two black quarterbacks are, are, are starting um, on the Super Bowl, starting black quarterbacks. Let's recognize that as first time ever. And four players that are HBCU at attended. So. They try to shut down the black voice, but we're going to keep showing and keep mm -hmm. shining. You yeah. know, I think that's awesome. I, I just want to make an observation again from age perspective at the table. In the 1970s, um, uh, we got the, the NFL franchise expansion in Tampa. And um, my family went to um, years and years of, of having uh, season tickets. And I sat through the 0-28 years of the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers. In the 1970s, if somebody would have said that there's going to be two black starting quarterbacks in any game, in any game, much less the Super Bowl, any game. everybody would have said, no, that's not possible. And unfortunately, a step farther going, no, 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 they're just not good enough to do that. That's the moment that's what the you moment. just said. And, they lift, and, and so just, just so we know, the Black National Anthem is lift every voice and sing, just for our you know, folks who may want to investigate that. Because some folks who told me throughout when I made my announcement on social media, they had no idea that that was the Black National Anthem. And so I think that is iconic within yeah. itself. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Black History Month, we're going to be celebrating it in all kinds of different ways Ooh, yes. at Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out. And Faye, what? what's Faye, what? on your mind? Faye, what? You know what's on my mind? Sex. Hey. And Dr. Ruth. Same girl. <coughs> Is she alive? Not together. Okay? <laughs> so, I'm you know, I was thinking about Dr. Ruth, you know, in the, I remember, you know, in the 90s, right? And I, I came from a very closeted, uh, you know, Catholic Christian home. And so the only thing that I got to see when it came to like sex and stuff like that was Dr. Ruth overnights. Right. And some real fuzzy channel that if you squinted oh really yeah. like that, you could see a penis maybe. Right. Anyway, so I just was thinking about Dr. Ruth. The woman wrote 45 books. She's still alive, Al. OK, she's still alive today. And I just want to say thank you to Dr. Ruth for what she did back then for a woman to speak up and speak out about sex and how important it is and how it's OK to have sex was unheard of. OK. And she was a huge trailblazer. She's 94. Go look her up. She's got social media. She's in his bedroom. Um, <laughs> and, uh, have you he, met her? I bet you've he, met her. Right, he Wait a minute. I, I, Wait I'm a minute. I didn't want to say you, You're going to love her even more. In, in <laughs> 1982, I'm at the University of Central Florida. 
I'm uh, in the activities programming for our student union, and I'm in charge of speakers. And I bring in this uh, this Jewish four foot six woman, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Ruth, mm -hmm. and she yes. comes. And in 1982, I'm at the University of Central Florida. She is the first person that I ever heard say in person, and then saw her uh, on a Phil Donahue or whatever it was that I saw her mm -hmm. uh, talk about how completely natural. Um, homosexual sex was mm. and that the problem was the haters of yeah. not having understanding it's not the people that are participating in the homosexual sex. Wow. She is the first person of my life that I ever heard say that. Wow. And Jonathan Casanius, uh, what's on your mind this week? Well, I have had a huge week obviously and I think uh, a, a lot of it comes from like the success of it comes from the fact that like I believe in myself now and I feel like the LGBT uh, community is awesome. like one of the easiest communities to stop believing in themselves, right? Because they don't have a reason to when we're, they're being beat down all the time. And like, I had so many people around me that believe in me and I never believed in myself, man. And something clicked in me and it will change your life. Like start believing in yourself, start realizing that you are worth it and you have a purpose. And like, it's things are going to start falling into place for you. Like that moment when you were saying that you were so happy about what, what was going on, right? And you felt like everything clicked. It, like yeah. that moment was like the, like you saying the universe has my back. Everything yes, that I'm doing exactly. is for these moments. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, awesome. Exactly. I love that. And even Al gave me some pro prolific um, advice and you had no idea where we were coming from. like, <laughs> how did you say <laughs> that? Like, like, he's, a, he's a lying ass <laughs> hoe. <laughs> I'm sorry, lying ass hoe? Lying ass hoe. That's that flavor again. All right, I got that. I'll accept that. All right, all right. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.